Um, did you get your lesson? I think they are outside on the table. Be sure you have your lessons because um, the outline is there. On the table. Did you all get them already? Right? Be sure you have your lesson. Um, Genesis 37. Let's look at starting in verse 3. And uh, we'll be reading from the NIV version of the Bible, so that's what we'll pick up our conversation. And it says, Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons, because he had been born of him in his old age, and he made a richly ornament robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. In verse 6, he said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were, uh, we were binding sheaves of grain out on the field where suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright, while your sheaves gathered round mine and bowed down to it. His brother said to him, do you in intend to reign over us? while you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then he had another dream, and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream, and this time the sun and moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, what is this dream you had? Will your mother and I, your brothers, actually come and bow down to ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. I would like to lift up to you on today this thought, Elevation Part 3, and if I had to preach this somewhere else, I would say that you will see glory after this. All right, all right. Amen. You will see glory after this, but this is Elevation Part 3. Let's pray. Father in heaven, it's once again we need you to speak to us. Shut up my ears, God, so that I only hear you. Open my eyes that I only see you. God, speak through my mouth. Crucify my flesh, God. Let your Holy Spirit reign and speak through this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We all have fought the good fight of faith. Um, you know, in many facets of our lives, we have been in a place where we have had to fight and if sometimes the fight has been within ourselves, and at times it's been without ourselves. Yes. We have had to fight ourselves on doing something for someone else, even though it was giving up our very last. And sometimes it was all we had, but because that person said they needed it, we gave it up. Sometimes we've had to fight ourselves on from choking people because they have said things to us multiple of times, and y'all don't have to say nothing, but I'm right. We, I have a few folk in my life that I have to sit down and I have to practice Personal restraint. I'm restraining myself from touching them. Because if they had said, you know, you, I get to that, but if you said one more thing yes. to me. Right. And so I have found about it that you're going to have to say that I, I'm there because I'm speaking for you. I have, I got a few folks, even on my job, I have to sit there and just look real yeah. dumb, mute, almost hell and hell, deaf, dumb and blind, all at the same time. Because if I say what's really on my mind, I will find myself unemployed. So I find myself having the good fight of faith, but I'm here to tell you that the fight has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with what I'm going to. All right. The challenge is all about what I'm going to. Where I am has nothing to do with who I am. Where I'm going has everything to do with who That's I right. am. Because where I'm going is to the end in mind. Marzano said in one of his leadership classes that you should always start the journey with the end in mind. Don't start where you're going. Start where you're going. Always know where you're going. If you leave the port of call, it is the job. It is the captain's job to know where you're going, but he also is responsible for knowing what's going to happen in the journey. And one of the things that I'm finding very important in the body of Christ in these days that we're living in is that people want to go places, but they don't know where they want to go. You ask people where they want to go, I don't know wherever you take me. That's demonic, because some places you take me, I don't need to go. And I'm yeah. teaching good right there. Yeah. There are some places that you have been that I don't want to go. I don't need that testimony. I just need to know it's on the map. So I know to avoid that thing. There's some places I need to be able to speak clearly to my future by saying I want to go there. By not making a decision, you've made a decision, and you need to speak up to where you're going because you can destroy your future if you don't get your present situation right. Mm -hmm. Elevation. Elevation is attached to where you're going. We're currently in a state of storms. The storms are either pushing us into our destiny, they're pulling us out of our troubles, 
or they are planting us in our permanent place of prophecy. Can I help you with something? You're in a storm, regardless whether you want to agree with it or not. The horrible part is that when we humble down and close our eyes, we think that the storm is not going to come. The problem is, is that the storm is passing, whether you acknowledge it or not. The storm is passing. What you don't know is what is the storm doing to your outside? Oh, my. You have to pay attention to what's going on, not just what's outside of your life, but what's also going on inside of your life. Because what's going on with you on the inside has a lot to do with what's going to happen on the outside. Mm -hmm. Because how you feel determines how you act. And ain't nobody talking, but that's good teaching right there. Because if you don't feel like being bothered, you're kind of quick on the tongue, you're short with your words, you know, fast with the eyes rolling, quick with the snapping of the hand. You know, real quick to curse and say some things. But one of the things that I've learned is that God is ready for us to be elevated. Elevation is attached to where you are going. So here we find a gentleman that has been attached to his elevation at birth. His elevation was brought on by the pre-existing issues of his parents. Here it is, we have a son that didn't even ask to be born. And I'm just going to tell you, a lot of us didn't ask to be born, but since we were born, we have to deal with the situations that we have. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so here we, we find that this gentleman was born based on the heels of his father's and mother's dreams. He was born based off of a conversation that they had with God, and God promised elevation is just not in the way that they had agreed to. Amen. And I want to tell you that most times when we look at elevation, elevation happens in the way that we don't agree because we all make that mistake. We've done it. You know, we sit down and we get bold and we do what Jesus taught in Matthew chapter 6. God, let not your, let not my will, but your will be done. Well, can I help you with that? When you agree to that, you agree to unknown terms, but a yes to God is a yes to God, but yes to God without you knowing where he's going is dangerous if that's not where you really want to be. You should never tell God yes and you're not ready to go. Sometimes you shouldn't say that because then when he goes to pull you, you get stuck. And there's nothing worse than a country than dealing with a stubborn mule. Mm -hmm. Y'all are quiet, but I'm teaching right. Because if you're going to tell God yes, that means you agree to where he takes you, even if it's not where you want to go. Even if it's not how you feel. He, because I'm going to tell you, God will shift us even when we don't feel like being shifted. Mm -hmm. He will elevate us, he will promote us, and he will place us, and then dare us to look at him and say, but God, no, you said yes. Well, yes, this is where I want you. Mm -hmm. I need you to be right there. Look at what happens. First thing we want to look at is elevation is divinely designed. All right. Elevation is divinely designed. It is divinely designed. Many of us go through situations, problems, trials, sometimes multiples of forms of personal and private hell. And ain't nobody talking. Mm -hmm. We experience public humiliation because we are unable to understand why we must go through such problems, such harsh pain, such private and public humiliation. We don't understand that when we get to our private hour, why God talks to us, but he won't say nothing of what we want to hear. Mm -hmm. Why would we ask God, God, why am I here? And you know, they used to teach in the, in the old theology of thinking that you can't question God, that you should ask God why you're going through. You should ask God anything that you want to know from God, because God is not, God will answer anything you ask if you ask it. Right. Uh-huh. And he will answer you. And then the problem is, are you really ready for what he has to say? Because sometimes what God has to say is not what you really want to hear. And so here we find that we get trapped in a lot of issues and a lot of concerns and a lot of private pains and secret shames. And then we pray and ask God to help us. And his help is your elevation. The problem is, is that the elevation is not to hurt you. It is to help you. But sometimes coming out does require that some things be broken. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And I'm, that's good stuff. Sometimes coming out of your situation requires that some things be broken. Here within our text, we find Joseph, who was, whose birth was built on an incline of internal haters. His birth came and he was planted in a place of an incline of internal haters. It's one thing to have people hate you outside of your family and outside of your home and outside of your inner circle, but it's a whole other dichotomy to have somebody hate you that's on the inner courts. That's right. It's a whole other. It's a whole other detriment to my demise 
when the folk who's supposed to support me yeah. hate me. Yeah. And here Joseph was born, he was elected by God. His seed was what God had ordained. Here he was born, elevated, appointed, got out of the birth canal, here on the planet, and he was born, set in a home with children that were before him, parents that are older than him, and all of them find out that they hated him because of who he was. Right. Then they, they got upset. Watch what happens. In verse 3, we find that Israel, which means has been saved by God, and was loved. Well, no, let me back up. Let me fix that. Israel means to be saved by God. Joseph means to add by God. Now, let me help you with something. Israel means to be saved by God, and Joseph means that he will add by God. So here it is, we got a man in the house, a little kid in the house at the age of 17, who had already figured out that he knew God and he heard God's voice clearly in his dreams. And he had a dream every night, and every night he opened his mouth, and he every morning he would get up, open his mouth, and tell his family about the dreams. And then at the end of each statement, you will see that they hated him even more. It's a whole nother dimension. Y'all are quiet. To be hated by folks who's supposed to hate you. It's some folks supposed to hate you, so that yet because they can't sing. They're supposed to hate you because you can sing. But it's a whole other thing to be in the group of folks that support you, supposed to have the same bloodline right. as you, and That's then right. they hate you. How can you hate the very spars that come from your daddy's lawn? Right. But now I'm here to tell you, if they if they hate Jesus, mm. did you ever think that the cross that you have to bear is a part of your elevation? That this pain that you suffer through is a part of your elevation. Did the thought ever cross your mind that God is building you up through the pain that you are going through? Y'all are quiet. Through the isolation that you're sitting in, that God is elevating you, he's building you, he's strengthening your life through the process of where you are. That the pain you are going through is built to elevate you. Watch what happens. This isolation is divinely designed to play a part in your elevation. Here it is, he's isolated. He's isolated in a place of brokenness because he keeps speaking to his dreams. He keeps speaking to what happens and then he goes to the people and they hate him. His bloodline hates him. So then the spirit of cutting folk off and pushing people away starts to set in. Because you can only let folk tear you down for so long before you stop talking to them. Y'all are quiet. Uh -huh. You're only gonna let folk not you're only gonna let folk mistreat you for so long, then you're gonna stop dealing with them. And I'm here to tell you that that's a form of abuse. Because anytime folk wanna stop you from going where God wants you to be, that is abuse. And you do that's not right. have to put up with that. Amen. Everybody in that then I'm gonna help you with something. You shouldn't run and tell everybody everything God showed you in private. There are some things God is going to speak to your life that's going to be spoken in private that's going to require you to keep it to yourself until God releases you. Mm -hmm. Your vision should not be released to everybody because everybody is not going where you're going. They're not going to elevate where you're going. So let's look at the next thing that happens. Elevation will distinctively develop you. Now here we find Joseph in verses 5 through 10, and we're in the 37th chapter of Genesis. For those of you that are here, the 37th chapter of Genesis, we're arguing now in verses 5 through 10. So here we find Joseph in verses 5 through 10 having clear discussion about dreams that God had revealed to him, but he felt the need to discuss them without understanding the impact of his discussion. And I'll help you with something. We have a lot of conversations with a lot of people and they're not prepared for the impact of our true conversations. Mm -hmm. They're not ready for the truth and the reality of our real conversations. They're not prepared to hear God or hear you because they're not ready to face where they are. Mm -hmm. And can I help you with something? We shouldn't have to wait on everybody to get on board. There's some folks that shouldn't be on board in the first place. It's kind of like going to the airport. You can get through certain areas, but you can't board the plane without a boarding pass. And there are some folks who shouldn't be in your life unless God has granted them a boarding pass. Am I teaching right? And so just like Joseph, the season of elevation is birthed through the truth of how people honestly feel about you. The way that they honestly felt wasn't in just in their words, it was in their deeds. And I'm going to help you with that. People will show you how they feel by the way that they treat you, not by just what they say. Right. How a person feels about you will be manifested in the way that they treat you. Treatment does speak to character. So truth is, the truth is, now, now here is where my argument gets, gets tacky. Joseph at 
17, have a clear understanding of what God was saying. So that removes the concept that you have to be old to understand the ways of God. Mm -hmm. that, that removes that argument because here we have a 17 year old who was able to go to sleep and God showed him in his dreams what exactly was going to happen. And so one of the things is that the truth of the matter is that Joseph was anointed and he didn't even get it. Y'all missed that, okay? I'm going to show you. Because the whole time we went through the 37th chapter of Genesis, there was no conversation of him acknowledging where the dreams came from. He just spoke what he saw. Yeah. And so can I help you with something? We have been anointed. We've been built for a work, a time of transition, a point of elevation. And I'm here to tell you that that moment is now. The glory that's coming now is not attached to if you believe God. The glory is about what do you know about God? Mm -hmm. Do you know that God is still able to heal and deliver and to set free and to strengthen you even though you don't feel like it? Because we were going on how we feel versus what God said. We wouldn't be getting anything. I'm just saying feelings. Because feelings do deceive people. You know, we feel like that person loves us and then we find out that they don't. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah we, we feel like that, you know, that we, right. that we made this only to find out that we did that and we were left holding an empty basket of emotions oh in the bottomless pit that we call life. Or did we call it love? And we mislabeled what it was because we didn't read the action clearly. But the brokenness of the action was actually the truth of how the person felt. Because what a man says is what he wants you to know. Yeah. What he does is yeah. what he means. Yeah. That's right. And people lie, their patterns yeah. do not. That's right. So in the season of elevation, there are four things that you should learn. One is that maturity. And I'm going to teach and get out of the way. Elevation will distinctively develop you in four ways. In four ways. Maturity is one. Joseph labored in a period of pain because he was being prepared for a place that was beyond his current placement. Your prophetic future is always beyond your current placement. Where you are, you should always be looking to where you're going, navigating where you are. You never get on a cruise ship and the captain not know the navigation map. You wouldn't be get, you wouldn't get in a car with somebody who couldn't tell you how to get to where they're going. I personally like riding with older people because older people know how to navigate the new roads and the low roads, but the, 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 the young folk only know how to ride the highway. They'll sit in two hours of traffic when you get in the car with somebody old. They would take you down OST and then get on color and then have you on the backside of 288 Highway 6 in Seattle Plantation coming from the train and you would they never got on 288 oh in that track. That, that's just the seasoned driver. So one of the things that I've learned is that people who mature don't talk about their maturity, they demonstrate. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Anybody who has real maturity don't talk about their maturity, they demonstrate their maturity. They live in their maturity. They don't show you, they don't just come to you, oh, I'm mature. Because real mature folk balance the budget. Real mature folk pay the bills on time. Mature folk have responsibility and oh, live yes. in the responsibility. Yes. Real mature people don't just play games. They stop the game and then get in the reality of what life really means. Yes, sir. Real people talk about maturity and yes, they sir. live in their maturity. See, Joseph lived and talked about his maturity by revealing to you the dream that God showed him. That's good. This is your elevation. That was the first thing. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to twitch right the second thing that you should learn, because elevation distinctively develops, is that humility. You will learn that through life, life will bring you to a point of humility, whether you want to be there or not. Because mm -hmm. what humility will do, humility will bring about this thing called transformation. Yeah. Because humility will break you in places that you thought you were strong, and it will also reveal to you the places you are still weak. Mm -hmm. Or as I like to call, still need development. If we was in the special ed terms, we would say that your IEP does not show progress. Your individualized education plan. Can I help you with something? Come here. As long as you are living, you are a lifetime learner. God requires that you learn more of him and not just who he is. If you look for God, 
just for blessings, you're not looking to God for the right things. Exactly. I'm teaching good right there. Because God, I'm still dumb, y'all. I still believe in miracles, signs, and wonders. I still believe that if we go to the hospital and lay hands on the sick and lay hands and call Jesus, that they will get healed. I still believe that. I still believe that if we lay hands on the lame, that they will get up. Humility will teach you how to trust God in places that you didn't even know you should be in. Because if we were to be real, we all have been in a few situations. And, and you know, we, we really can't relate to this song. No, no matter if you're younger, oh, you know, the scriptures say, I, I once was young, but now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, you know, the seed begging bread. Well, I will go one further because some folks may not have read that because, you know, reading is fundamental. But that some folks may not have read that scripture. But there was this song that they used to sing that we I got in some situations that I was caught between a rock and a hard place and a miracle and a blessing and I needed God to move. And when God moved the whole thing, all I can stand up and say is if it had not been for the Lord. I only need him to be on my side. I, I'm excited but I get because I go in right there. If it had not been for the Lord, he graced me by coming on my side. But if it had not been for the Lord. Who was on my side? Then they got arrogant in the song. They raised the question, where, oh where, would I be? So the first thing that we learned is that elevation is distinctively developing your maturity. It is developing your humility. And then number three, it develops your experiences. Time coupled with life will birth your experience. Yes. Time coupled with life. Not season, time. Time coupled with life will birth your experiences. Your experiences are your test. Your test develop your perfection. Your perfection in then in turn pushes you into your faith. Because if you go through enough things, now um, here's the teacher in me. If you don't learn from going through some things, you will repeat the course again. Can I teach that again? You, you're going to go through some situations that God is testing and he's looking for you to demonstrate mastery of what you have learned. And if you do not show it, then you will retake the course, the class, the test all over again. Here is the horrible part about good instruction is that if you're a real good teacher, you don't have to reteach the same thing. You give the same word to the same kid and you will find out that they didn't know it because they didn't pay attention the first time you taught them. Mm -hmm. Read that good instruction. I'm just saying, good instruction is just good instruction. And if you notice, God hasn't given no new instruction since he released the Bible. There is no new instruction. That's good instruction. I'm just saying, that one was for free. So then when we look at the last thing, uh, elevation will distinctively develop your maturity, your humility, your experiences, and then it will distinctively develop your placement. There are many of us who have been placed in God and we have been anointed by God, but we've heard folk tell us that we can't be used. Or you're too young to be used. Or you ain't had no testimony. You ain't been through nothing. Can I help you with something? If you woke up this morning, you've been through something. Y'all were quiet. That, that was good. If you woke up this morning, and, and then I'm going to help you. If your cell phone rang this morning, somewhere in one of those phone calls, you heard some bit of news that did not make you feel good. You've yeah. been through something. Just because I don't have your testimony don't mean that it didn't impact my life. Mm -hmm. I don't need your testimony. I just need to know what you've been through. Right. So as we move forward, we learn that elevation is built on the idea that we are distinctively developed in the eyes of God. We must learn to do what Joseph did, and that's to remain faithful to God, even though it don't look like God is with us. Can I help you with that? We get in a lot of things, a lot of situations, some sticky situations, this that yet. We get caught saying some things, doing some things, participating in some things. That if God don't move, then we gonna die in that situation. And God moves, but we sometimes don't trust God through the process, even though we know the outcome. Yeah. We have to trust God in the midst of the process, or else we will not make it to the end. Because the process, you know the song, you know the scripture, the race is not given to the swift or the strong, but to the one that endures of end. Endurance is elevation. All right, let me show you. When you, you know, I, I, I'm, I've had the chance to learn, um, you know, to, to drive a stick shift. I, I learned how to drive a stick, and one of the things that I've learned in, in driving a stick shift versus an automatic is that transmissions do the same thing regardless to what kind of car it is. All right. 
Because once you put the car on the incline, the transmission will kick in because it needs more strength, more endurance to climb the mountain than it did to be on the flat surface. Y'all missed that. And so when you start looking at it, and, and, and transmissions go all the way back to oxen. When you, load a, when you load a wagon and you put an ox in it, the best way to find out how strong the ox was was how deep he dug in the ground when he took his first step. That's transmission. That's, that's endurance. That's elevation. That's good teaching right there. And so when you look at what's going on, the reason you are struggling to get up the hill is because you won't let your spiritual transmission elevate you. We need God to shift us. And I'm learning that you can, in, in an automatic, you put it in drive, and you can floor it. The transmission still has to skip each gear. It has to go through each gear. To, it has to go through each gear. And if you get in the stick shift, no matter what you do, the only difference between a stick shift and an automatic is that one requires you to adjust at every dimension. Shift. God, have mercy. And so when you look at a stick shift, every time you get in and you get to a certain speed, the car won't go no faster until you shift. And shifting is a process. Y'all are missing God right there. And if you notice, the transmission won't let you accelerate till you clutch and you shift. Now, where I come from, you know, we used to say you can't skip and strip it. Well, in the spiritual realm, that don't work. You can't skip a step unless God release you. Just saying. I'm just saying. And if we're going to get released, we've got to get released knowing that it, you have to know what you're riding in before you get up to move it. You can't get in a station and then put the brake down and expect the car to stand still if it's in because it's going to move. Exactly. It's going to move. And if you don't know, and I'm just, I'm just going to say it, I'm tired of folk who just learned where the Bible was having prophetic words. Oh, I'm, I'm concerned. I, I, I'm concerned. Here it is. I got a 17-year-old who was anointed at birth. And here it is, I got a 30-year-old who just realized where God was and hadn't spent no time before his presence. 